Jesus tonight? I said, did anybody come to echo the name of Jesus? Come on, let me hear you praise him and worship him. That's what we've come to do tonight. Healing to 
belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you.
to you. Almighty God, Almighty God, we worship you. Mm. I want to be close, close to your side, so heaven is real and death is a lie. I want to hear voices of angels above. Singing as one, singing hallelujah, holy, holy, God almighty, he's the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, God almighty, the great
portion of it. I Somebody say it tonight. There is no power. There is no power. There is no power.
incredible presence of the Almighty in this house. Amen. Amen. Would not surprise me at all if miracles have not already happened in this place uh, because his people have given themselves uh, unreservedly in worship. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And through your worship, you've prepared your heart to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. And God is good to his people. Hallelujah. Those that were in our ministers and wives session last night, that has a little more significance to you now than it did before last night. God is good to his people. Amen. And one of the one of the things that God has so blessed his people with uh, is anointed men of God. Uh, amen. Who are able to proclaim the word of God uh, with power and anointing. Amen. Amen. And we are so blessed tonight to have with us uh, Brother Wayne Huntley, who is certainly one of those among us who God has placed great anointing upon. The Huntley, of course, is known throughout our fellowship and around the world in our fellowship. Uh, powerful preaching ministry. Amen. As a, as a young evangelist just getting started, uh, I know uh, he was about four years older than myself and already was making a great impact and, and was providing younger men as myself great inspiration, amen, and passion for the lost and anointed preaching, amen. And since that time, he's always been one of my favorite preachers. Uh, praise God, uh, amen. Uh, he, uh, in 1978, uh, went to Raleigh, North Carolina, planted a church there, and uh, for those 40 years since then has served as pastor and now bishop of that great congregation. He also serves as the district superintendent of the North Carolina district. It's a great honor tonight to welcome my friend to this pulpit. Amen. Would you welcome Brother Wayne Huntley as he comes to preach the word. And everybody said praise the Lord. It's a high privilege to be with you this evening in the most exciting day of the apostolic church. I don't have time to really prove my point this evening, but I will very boldly declare unto you that we are more blessed to live right now than if we were living in the book of Acts. The power of God, the outflow of the Spirit, the fulfillment of prophecy, the uh, favor of God upon the church. This is the greatest day of revival, evangelism, and church growth the apostolic church has ever known. And we're thrilled to be a part of it. I appreciate the kindness of your presbyter and local pastor and those that are responsible for extending to me the invitation to come and be here in your district and to share the word of the Lord with you this evening. I have great respect and uh, high admiration for Brother Phillips. He and I first met when we both were young men. And he uh, made mention that I may be four years older than he is. And uh, he was over in the state of Iowa. And I was in Raleigh, North Carolina. I believe at that time that we were both youth presidents. So that tells you that it's been a few days. It's been a long time since I was a youth president. But I am encouraged to tell you that if it means anything to you, it does to me, I am still preaching youth camps and youth conventions. Some of them have booked them way up in advance, and as a joke, I'd say I'd love to preach your youth convention. Uh, it's so far out advance. If you'll just send your van by the rest home, I'll be glad to come. I always tell them when I go to preach a youth convention, I'll be glad to come on one condition. Do not tell them 
how old I am. Because I always tried to obey my mother, but since her death a number of years ago, I'm free from my responsibilities to her. Because my mother's favorite phrase to me, which some of you before me are hearing right now, is my mother would always say to me, Wayne, honey, I wish you would act your age. And now that my mother is deceased, I refuse to obey her. I refuse to act my age. Because in the Holy Ghost, we're still very young and very lively. I come in, Brother Phillips, for the outstanding job, serving on the district board, a very prestigious position of leadership and guidance to the body of Christ and you made a wise selection in placing him in that position and he is a man of great experience, wisdom and knowledge and desire for the expansion of the kingdom of God. I give honor to Brother Cornelius, this great church here, the lovely facilities, the hospitality, their love and respect for ministry. I Just in the brief while that I've been here, I believe this church could assist a lot of churches in how to receive ministry how to bless ministry, and thereby be blessed yourself. I want to thank them for all their kindness to me. I teased them uh, Wednesday night when I preached here. Came in just a few minutes late. Of course, I'm staying in the evangelist quarters, which is right down the hall. I said, I, as I came in a few seconds late, a few minutes late, I would have been here earlier, but the traffic was just horrendous. <laughs> I had to wait on people to clear the hall <laughs> so I could step out. Great to be here. Great to feel the wonderful presence of the Lord. Your intensity for receptivity to the work of God, the will of God, I commend you for that. I'd like to turn in your Bibles with me tonight to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4 and verse number 30. I give honor to your district officials, although they're not privileged to be here tonight. I do deeply respect the leadership of this district. And I'd say to all of you that are under the sound of my voice, in a day of anarchy, chaos, disrespect for leadership. Do not allow that to come into the church. Maintain your love, your respect, and your admiration for your leaders. And that's the will of God and the word of God. I'm reading tonight out of 2 Kings chapter 4, verse number 30. It was a high privilege to speak to the ministry last evening. I enjoy those rare moments of grand occasion when I'm privileged to just open my heart, be transparent, share the things that I have gathered through my accumulative years and privileged opportunities of being in this apostolic church. I enjoyed that very much last evening. I'm reading out of 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse number 30. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth. That is two very strong declarations of intention. As thy soul liveth and as the Lord liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. He went up and lay upon the child, put his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, his hands upon his hands. Now notice this. It will be the heart of our message tonight. He stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up, and here it is again, stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times. That is significant. He sneezed seven times. And the child opened 
his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. For those of you that are ministerial aspirants, desiring ministry, I share this simple thought with you. The Bible could not be but so thick, contained but so many words. So whenever you see anything repeated, there's a message there. God would not repeat it if there was not something He wanted us to gain from that. And so the Bible said that the man of God stretched himself. Twice the Bible refreshes us in our minds with the fact that He stretched Himself. I want to preach to you what I feel the Spirit has helped me identify in our modern day apostolic church in order to help us. I want to help you. I want to bless you because I want you to have everything God's got for you. I want every church to be jam-packed. I want every altar to be filled. I want the waters of baptism splashing in every sanctuary. I want the parking lots overflowing. I want great revival all across this fellowship. If that's your passion tonight, clap your hands and shout amen. So I will preach this afternoon for a few minutes on the subject, stretch for the supernatural. Stretch for the supernatural. God bless you. You may be seated. My goal this evening is to posture, profile, and properly place the apostolic church for the supernatural. I really do not believe that you are that far from the supernatural move of God that you passionately are pursuing. You really are not a long distance from God showing you His unprecedented power, the fulfillment of His prophetic word, and the promises that He has given to you. I come tonight to rebuke the lies of your adversary, to stand in between you and Him tonight, and to declare, you are not far from a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. You are not far from the manifestation of the miraculous, supernatural power of God. Clap your hands and receive that word right there. So I have discerned in my spirit, through prayer, study of the word, and the privilege of traveling the fellowship, I have discerned the modern day device of the devil to distract, detour, and to be debilitate the apostolic church. It's the devil's desire to frustrate you, to intimidate you, to make you feel inadequate, insufficient, and incomplete. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, the Bible said that we're not to be ignorant of the devices of our of the enemy, lest he get an advantage of us. We must not allow in our minds, in our attitudes, the devil to get an advantage of us. It's his desire to conven continually convince us. Here it is. He is totally given to selling us a lie. And that lie is that we are missing something. That we are inadequate. That we are incomplete. That we are insufficient. By that I'm not talking about an individual person. I'm talking about the corporate body of Christ. I'm talking about the apostolic church. I want to tell you this evening that Jesus came to earth for a multitude of purposes. And one of those purposes was to count the cost. Just to expose himself as flesh to what every New Testament Christian would face. So for 33 years he opened himself up to hell's greatest attack. To the, the lowest valleys, to the highest mountains. 
to the cruelest attacks and to the harshest rejections. He came to experience every bit of that so that on the day of Pentecost, when he would initiate his New Testament church, he would put in it exactly what was needed for it to be a victorious church from its initiation until its rapture. I preach to you tonight that on the day of Pentecost, he put in the church everything we would need to defeat the devil, to overcome sin, to have revival, to reach our city, to see a worldwide move of the Holy Ghost. He put it in the church. And he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church because he put virtue in the church. He put victory in the church. He put his name in the church. He put his power in the church. I'm here to preach to you tonight. Everything that's needed is in the church. I want to say that again. Everything you need is in your church. Somebody shout, it's in my church. And so, he wants us to keep ourselves involved in snipe hunts. You ever been on a snipe hunt? That's an exercise in futility. Where they take you into the woods and they give you this bag and they tell you they're going to run a snipe by you and you're to catch it. There's no such thing as a snipe. It's an exercise in futility, but you're there looking for something that does not even exist. It's like a wild goose chase is what some people would call it. You ever heard anybody say, I sent him on a wild goose chase? Or you're sent looking for a four-leaf clover. Or maybe a bottle with a magic genie that when you rub it, it's going to come out. And all that you need is going to be found in a missing bottle somewhere. That's the desire of the devil to keep us on a hot pursuit, looking for something we feel that's missing, searching for it over land and sea, ever intense about what is it that we're missing? What is it that's not really here? We're incomplete. We're unfulfilled. There's something that is missing. Recently, I came up with one of the most powerful illustrations, I think, of my introductory point, and that was this. One morning I was going through our house and I asked my wife, I said, uh, have you seen my glasses? I am looking for my glasses. She said, honey, they are on your face. (laughs) And that's exactly what the devil is doing to this church. He's got us looking for something that's not missing. He's got us searching for something that's not lost. He's got us feeling if we could find that one more missing piece, if we could find that spiritual pot of gold and a fictitious rainbow, it would all just come together. I'm going to preach to you tonight and I'm going to pound and pound and pound it. There is nothing missing. We are not incomplete. We are not deficient. There is nothing lacking. Everything we need is right here, right now. You're feeling it right now. You're sensing it right now. You're touching it right now. It's not somewhere lost. It's here right now. It's like Moses When the Lord said, what's in your hand? He didn't even realize he had what he needed in his hand. It's like David when his brother said, here, put on this armament. He said, I have, Saul said, put on this armament. David said, I can't put that on. I haven't tried that, but I can tell you what I have. I I do know what I have. And I pause to say to this generation, Don't let anybody tell you that all of a sudden 
We don't know who we are, what we are, or where we're going. And we need somebody to totally take us as though we're blind and lead us where we've never been. This church has always had revival. This church has always been blessed. This church has always had a move of God. It started on the day of Pentecost. And it's never ended. And it won't end until the trumpet sounds. David said, I do know what I got. I got a sling and a few smooth stones here. Peter himself said, silver and gold have I none. See, that's what the enemy wants us to capitalize on. It's what we don't have. Silver and gold have I none. And let me just say this in case there may be somebody being deceived here this evening. Just because your pastor does not live in a multi-million dollar house, author 25 books and have a private jet and fly all over the country doesn't mean he's not a man of God. Because Peter said, I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold. But such as I have, give I unto thee. This world doesn't need our silver. They don't need our gold. But they need what we have. Turn around somebody and say, we got it. It's here. There's nothing missing. We are complete. And I shall give you a few more verses before I launch in. 2 Peter 1 and 3, the Bible says, According as his divine power, notice this, hath given unto us. He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. There is nothing missing. We are not deficient. We are not inadequate. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Everybody say thoroughly furnished. There's no empty rooms in here. There's spiritual furniture in every place of this building. It is completely filled by the grace of God, the goodness of God, the power of God, the spirit of God, the righteousness of God, the love of God. It's in this church. But even then, there is something we need to understand. And that's what I will preach about tonight. The most needed, desperately sought after miracle took place simply when the prophet stretched himself. Everybody say stretched himself. To stretch. Now this is my definition. You may not find it in Webster. He and I often agree and maybe sometimes we don't. I never have agreed with him too much anyway because you know how we got the dictionary. Mr. and Miss Webster got into a discussion and one word led to another. <laughs> That's how we got the dictionary. So I have my own definitions of words. And I'm going to give you now my definition for stretch. Everybody say stretch. To stretch is to take to a radical extreme extent. When you stretch something, you take it to a radical, extreme extent. When the prophet of God stretched that which appeared to be unthinkable, unimaginable, and unprecedented took place. It became a reality. The boy that was dead came back to life. The supernatural power was manifested. I'm going to preach to you this evening. That we have, let me, let me just say, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I just want to go ahead and say it because some of you are looking at me. I just want to say to you, our challenge is not an addition. It is not an addition. Our challenge is an extension. Right. 
When I stretch, I have not added anything that wasn't already there. All I do is take what was there to its most radical extent. I want to tell you, when this church stretches, what we thought was lost can be found. What we thought was dead can come back to life if the church will just stretch. Try it right now. All he had to do was stretch. Everybody say, stretch what we've got. If we will stretch what we have, the unthinkable, the unimaginable, and the unprecedented will take place. But it will happen simply when we stretch. Take to a radical extreme extent. Well, as is in all of us, it seems it will do everything to avoid the eventual and the evident. We're always looking for alternate routes to arrive at the supernatural. Now, I didn't think you'd run the aisles on that one because most of us think we're one more genius program from revival. We think we're, we're one more well-oiled scheme and strategy from an apostolic move of God. I remind you, this is not a secular corporation. This is not a business as such. This does not operate off the genius of men. It does not function off the creativity or the imagination of a man. This operates off the innate power of God that resides in this church. Because I heard him say one time, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Another program is not going to bless your church. Another scheme is not going to grow your church. What we've got to do is stretch what we have. Clap your hands and shout, yes. Take it. Take it to its most radical, extreme extent. So they tried another plan. Gehazi went and laid the staff on the child. It didn't work. It didn't work. When he laid the staff on the child, the Bible says there was neither voice or hearing in response to this effort. It was a total failure. Sometimes there are some things that even the staff can't accomplish. <laughs> even the staff can't get the job done. We count on the staff to get the job done. Now, y'all are going to have to pray for me here tonight because there's all kind of preaching in this place. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm getting some revelation here tonight that I, I need to talk to you about. Don't sit on a pew and expect your staff to bring revival. Don't come to church and expect your staff to create the atmosphere. We're not going to get it by laying on of the staff. We're going to get it when everybody in this room's stretching. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn around to your neighbor and say, you're one stretch away from the supernatural. The Bible said he stretched himself. The Bible said he stretched himself. And when he did, the flesh of the child began to wax warm. I'm telling you, our cold, dead services will begin to heat up, warm up, come back alive if we who are there will stretch ourselves. If you're tired of dead, cold church, stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. And I'm going to give it away right now. But stretch yourself in faith. Stretch yourself in passion. Stretch yourself in worship. Take it to the most radical, extreme extent, and the miracle will happen. I won't time, take time to give you the lesson tonight, but if you will 
simply Google it, <laughs> you will find the significance of the seven sneezes. Because there are seven characteristics of every living thing. Everything that is alive has seven characteristics. I could give them to you. That's your homework. Don't do it right now because I got some other things to say. That's just one point. We ain't got to the heart of it yet. There are seven things that proves something is really alive. And when that boy sneezed seven times, it was to be an undeniable affirmation. He wasn't nearly alive. He weren't, wasn't partially alive. But he was totally, fully alive in every aspect, brought back to life, to completion. God doesn't want our churches halfway apostolic, one-third apostolic. He wants us fully revived and renewed and restored by the power of the Holy Ghost. Another little point, and I'll move on quickly. I got a good example right here. Shh. Oh, he woke up. I was hoping he'd stay asleep. <laughs> I caught my brother dozing over here. I appreciate your confidence in my ministry. You knew everything was under control, didn't you? You weren't a bit worried. When that man of God went to where that little boy was. You want to preach a while? <laughs> the Bible said he stretched himself over him. He stretched himself over him. And you know what happened when he stretched himself over him? His problem could no longer be seen. He completely covered that boy. If you will stretch yourself, your barriers, your hindrances, your obstacles, your challenges will no longer even be visible. You will completely cover them and they will go out of sight. You don't need an addition. You just need an extension. You need to take to a radical extreme what God has given to you. Take it to a radical extreme. Such things as this. We need to stretch who we are. Take it to the most radical extreme. Did you ever notice in the book of Esther that when Esther got ready to be called upon to save the nation. She said, I can't do this. She told Mordecai, I can't, I can't go in there because there is but one law. And that one law is whosoever shall enter that hasn't been bidden shall die. And she said, I haven't been called. Mordecai had perception. He had revelation. Wait a minute, Esther. That has nothing to do with you. That law said a whosoever. You are not a whosoever. You happen to be the queen. You happen to be the bride of the king. Don't belittle yourself to think of yourself as every common ordinary person you are not common you are not ordinary you are not a whosoever you are the bride of Christ you are the body of Christ you are the people of God you're a royal priesthood you're a chosen generation you're a peculiar people apostolics we must not live like we are like everybody else. We are not like everybody else. We've got a promise. We've got a promise. 
We've got a power. We've got a relationship. Turn around to somebody and say, I'm not a whosoever. I'm not a whosoever. That may happen to a whosoever, but it ain't going to happen to me. I'm not a whosoever. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm blood bought. I'm spirit filled. I'm loved by the Lord. I'm promise covered. I got prophecy on me. It may happen to them, but it's not going to happen to me. I felt something that I need to pause and minister this morning. You have may you may have seen people die of the disease you've got. I'm coming to tell you tonight. That doesn't mean it's going to kill you. I feel this in the Holy Ghost right now. You may have a situation you've seen it totally debilitate and destroy others. But that doesn't mean it's going to do it to you. Here's how I know. In Acts 12, Peter was put in jail. The same jail where James was killed. Herod was sharpening his sword to kill Peter. But Peter had something James didn't have. He had a word of prophecy that said, When thou art old, another shall lead thee where you go. In other words, you're going to die a death when you're old. He said, When you're old, hey, I'm not old. Peter said, I'm not old. I, I, that don't have anything to do with me. It may have happened to James, but it's not going to happen to me. I got to get somebody to rise out of your depression tonight because you have predestined yourself to what you have seen happen to others. And just because it happened to others doesn't mean that it's going to happen to you. Just because others have not had revival does not mean you can't have revival. Just because others have not grown does not mean you cannot grow. Just because others wasn't healed doesn't mean you can't be healed. You need to lift your voice and shout, I'm not a whosoever. <laughs> Quit living like a pauper when you're the child of the king. We need to stretch who we are. We need to stretch what we are. And what we are is we are the body of Christ. Years ago, we were in our little church before we built the new one. God had given me a sermon to preach that night. Later on, some of you may be old enough to remember I actually preached it at a general conference in Louisville, Kentucky in a night service. It was entitled, Not Discerning the Lord's Body. The Lord told him, there's many among you that are sick. They're weak. Some are even dead because you did not discern the Lord's body. And the message is, everything Jesus did, the church is to do, and even greater. Because we are now the body of Christ in the earth. The first time I was set to preach that in that little church, we were having worship service. And on the back row of that little church, there was a commotion. And I saw a lady fall over on the pews. And medical people began to scream, She's dead! She's dead! And then that which I feared came upon me. Brother Huntley, get back here. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Call an ambulance. I have a word of the Lord for you. Call an ambulance. That's not what I, I said, but it is what I thought. And the Lord said, no, no, no. I want you to act out what I've given you to preach tonight. 
The church is the body of Christ in the earth. What would I do if I was here in flesh? That's what you're to do. And that's what you're to be. So I started walking back there. It looked like the parting of Jordan. I met no obstacles. They gladly let me through. When I got back there, she's laying across the, uh, the pew. And I'm telling you, medical people said she was dead. I felt instructed of the Lord not to touch her. I put my hand a few inches above her head. And I said, all right. I'm going to do what he would do. And I said, Sister Anderson, in the name of the Lord Jesus, rise and be healed. And when I did, I started moving my hand. And every time I moved my hand, her head moved. Until after a while, she stood straight up. And she said, what happened? She said, what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The body of Christ stretched itself to believe that what he did, we can do greater things than this. Shall we need to stretch our faith. One of the greatest examples of stretching the faith in the Bible is the fact that David said, I killed a bear and I killed a lion. Oh, my Lord. There's a whole lot of difference between a bear and a lion and a giant. But David just stretched until his faith was at its most radical, extreme extent until he then made a statement. The God that gave me the bear, the God that gave me the lion is the God that will give me the giant. I'm here to preach to somebody tonight that God gave you your lion and God gave you your bear for one reason. He knew there was a giant in your future and he wanted you to stretch your faith to believe that with God all things are possible. All things are possible. We must Stretch. We must stretch our faith. Take it to a radical, extreme extent. I wish somebody stretch right now and believe God's going to heal me. I wish somebody stretch right now and say God's going to meet my need. I wish somebody stretch right now and say God's going to do what I thought was impossible. There is nothing missing. There is nothing deficient. There is nothing lacking. It's all right here in our body. But it's got to be stretched. Stand up with me. Clap your hands. The waters parted. The waters parted when Moses stretched the rod. The hand, the withered hand of the man in the New Testament was healed because Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. The greatest miracle of all time, purchasing salvation, deliverance, and eternal life, was purchased simply when Jesus when he stretched hell was defeated when he stretched sin was conquered when he stretched the Holy Ghost was promised when he stretched Victory was in the wings for a church that was about to be born. And it happened when he stretched to take to the most radical, extreme extent. 
you have not seen what this will do because you have been handling it in a comfortable position. But when you stretch, you can reach what you didn't think you could reach. You can touch what you didn't think you could touch. And you can have what you thought you could not have. I rebuke the lie of the devil that some of you have thought. There's something missing. We're incomplete. I'm just inadequate. That is a lie. You have it right now. But what you've got to do is stretch it to a radical, extreme extent. One of my dear friends over in Alabama, he's a young preacher. I have a lot of young preacher friends. As a matter of fact, all my friends are young. And this is one of the most enjoyable stories I've been able to tell. He was at Because of the Times as Sister Mangan was preaching. And when Sister Mangan preaches, she anticipates a great response. I said that very kindly. <laughs> she does not anticipate a great response. She demands a great response. And so my friend was trying to help her preach. He's in his 30s, maybe early 40s, young preacher. And he's standing up, amen, and Sister Mangan. And nobody else is moving. He's the only one. And I don't know what she was exactly thinking. But out of all the people sitting, he was the only one standing. So she says to him, Young man, is that all you've got? <laughs> He's the only one amen in her. And she says, young man, is that all you've got? He said, I went, <laughs> and just kind of sunk down into his seat. I've just come to ask the church tonight. Is that all you have? <laughs> have you reached your worship radical extreme extent? Have you reached your radical extreme extent in your faith? I want to say to these young preachers, I don't know how, I don't know how many more times I get to preach to you, so I'm going to preach to you tonight. Freddie Freeze ain't going to have a Holy Ghost on fire revival. Joe Cool ain't going to set a church on fire. You don't heat ovens with snowballs. So you can sway up here with your latest style and be Mr. Smooth if you want to, but a church ain't going to do nothing with you. We don't need snowmen in the pulpit. We need a Holy Ghost anointed outpouring of the Spirit where you take it to a radical, extreme extent. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the book said the violent take it by force. Nobody's going to give it to you. You're not going to inherit it. You're going to have to take it and the way you take it is push it to the radical extreme step. Give it all you got. Give it all you've got. Believe with everything that's in you. Pray with everything that's in you. Worship with everything that's within you. Stretch. 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 You can't reach it comfortably. You can't reach it let relaxed. You can only reach it when you are in your most radical, extreme extent. Thank you. Reaching as high as you can reach it. There is nothing absent. There 
is nothing missing. There is nothing incomplete. Everything we have just needs to be stretched to its most radical extreme. So turn around to your neighbor right now and say, is that all you've got? Or is there somebody here tonight that's ready to get out in the aisle and take it to the next level? Take it to a radical extreme extent. Push it just a little harder. Press it just a little more. Believe just a little more. Desire just a little more. That's where your miracle is. Somebody can get a miracle right now. If you'll step out in that aisle, stretch your faith. Stretch your faith. Stretch your hands and shout, I believe God can do it. I believe God will do it. Nothing is missing. Nothing is inadequate. Nothing is incomplete. It's in this room right now. It's in this atmosphere right now. It's in this church right now. It's moving on you right now. It's touching you right now. It's challenging you right now. It's blessing you right now. Lift your voices loud. Lift your voices loud. Stretch it. Stretch it. Stretch it. Take it to a most radical extreme extent. It happened when the man of God stretched. It happened when the man of God stretched. Stretch, child of God. Stretch, man of God. Stretch, saint of God. Lift your voice and lift your hands. Stretch your passion. Stretch your faith. Stretch your expectation. Stretch your trust. Stretch your prayer. Stretch it right now and the miracle will happen. Come on, church. Push it, push it, push it. Push it a little farther. Reach a little higher. Reach a little higher. Reach a little higher. If you'll stretch, your challenge will disappear. If you will stretch, your negative circumstance will disappear. If you'll stretch, you'll see the supernatural. Reach over and lay your hand on somebody beside you. And say, stretch. Stretch for the supernatural. Reach your hand out and touch the supernatural right now. Reach your hand out right now and stretch Lord, we for the supernatural. The Lord, we move of God in this place tonight. There's a revival here tonight. There's an anointing here tonight. There's a deliverance here tonight. There's a miracle here tonight. If 
you would just stretch for it. Everything changes. But you have to stretch. Everything changes. You have to stretch. Let's go. 